in this video we discuss the cone let c be a fixed curve in the three dimensional space let v be a fixed point in the three dimensional space let us look at all lines which pass through this vertex this will be called as the vertex so we are looking at uh, all lines which pass through this vertex and through a point on this curve the guiding curve so that is one such line and uh, let's say this is uh, another such line <clears throat> the curve c will be called as the guiding curve so all the lines that you get in this fashion constitutes a geometric object which is called as the cone note that this cone is an infinite cone right these lines are infinite in length and in some sense it's a two sided or a double sided cone from our school education um, we normally uh, when you say cone we normally think of an object of this kind which is uh, actually a right circular cone so we'll come to the right circular cone shortly any line of this kind is given a name it is called as a generator why is it called as a generator you can think of uh, the line l to be moving in such a way that uh, it always passes through v and the and one of the, and uh, and also uh, another line uh, another point on the curve so you can think of the line moving such that it moves on the curve with uh, obviously uh, always passing through the vertex v so it's called as the generator now if you specialize all this to the right circular cone in this case the guiding curve c will be a circle and uh, the vertex v will be a point on a line perpendicular to the circle and passing to the center so i'll draw the picture i have uh, the guiding curve to be the circle c let uh, this point denote the center and uh, we are looking at a line which is passing through the center and the vertex v is a point on this line let us call this as alpha beta and gamma all right let us uh, draw a generator so suppose uh, my line l is this this is the generator l and let us say that this angle is theta now i wish to write down the equation of uh, the right circular cone the point to note is that theta is a constant for the right circular cone theta will be a constant 
y so wherever uh, this point is so whichever generator you take okay the situation is perfect perfectly symmetric what we get is so if you join this point to the center what you get is a right angle triangle since this is a circle the radius rho is a fixed quantity all right the this side so let let us uh, let me give a name to this point let us call it as q vq is a constant and therefore uh, by pythagoras theorem the hypotenuse will be a constant all right so the angle between uh, so i think it's enough to just uh, note that uh, this line is not changing this line is uh, the length is not changing and you have a, you have a right angle triangle so this angle theta is not changing therefore cos theta is a constant cos theta is a constant and uh, i can write down cos theta in terms of uh, a generic point x comma y comma z on the cone so if i take a generic point p x y z on the cone and if i take a unit vector in this direction let us say a cap and a unit vector in this direction say b cap then cos theta is equal to a cap dot b cap cos theta will be mod a cap mod b cap cos theta but most the uh, <coughs> mod of a cap and mod of b cap is one because they are unit vectors okay all right now uh, a cap a unit vector in this direction is the vector pv upon mod pv and uh, i can write down the vector pv to be x minus alpha i plus y minus beta j plus z minus uh, gamma k so i have the direction ratios of pv as x minus alpha y minus beta z minus gamma and from that i create a vector and if i want a unit vector i divide it by the magnitude of this vector x minus alpha squared plus y minus beta squared plus z minus gamma squared raised to half okay and uh, b cap similarly okay so i want a unit vector along this direction um since this theta is fixed and uh, this line is passing through alpha beta gamma and the center of the circle okay um is it okay to assume that uh, this line which i'm going to call as the axis the line which is passing through v and the center of the circle has direction ratios l m and n um so i will have to make this assumption that uh, the axis is known to me okay so so the direction ratios of the axis are known to me so in that case b cap will be qv divided by the length of qv and just as i did here i can write down the unit vector as li plus mj plus nk divided by l square plus m square plus n square is to half and uh, now i can write down uh, a dot cap b dot okay so the dot product of these two will be l times x minus alpha plus m times y minus beta plus n times z minus gamma divided by this quantity 
divided by this quantity okay so <clears throat> cos theta is equal to l times x minus alpha plus m times y minus beta plus n times z minus gamma divided by x minus alpha squared plus y minus beta squared plus z minus gamma squared raised to half and uh, l square plus m square plus n square raised to half okay and that's the equation of the cone with uh, LMN as the direction ratios of the axis and uh, theta being the semi vertical angle a terminology borrowed from school geometry all right uh, that's all in this video uh, again the right circular cone is uh, an infinite cone these lines are extending in the opposite direction also and in uh, a sense similar to what I had said above it's a double sided cone okay so in the next video we shall uh, look at some examples illustrating the construction of cones and cylinders i stop here